Hey yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new video and today we're going to be talking about 10 things that the Sonic 30th Anniversary game needs. If you like the video, make sure to like, comment, favorite, subscribe. Anyways, let's get right into it. Starting off the list at our number 10 spot, it's a little minor but I think it's important enough to add to the list and that's that we need the old Sonic design back. In Sonic Forces, we got introduced to a new Sonic design that quite frankly, I'm not a big fan of and not a lot of other people are a big fan of. The fans didn't really like it, I didn't really like it, most people didn't like it because it's kind of ruining the continuity of Sonic. Some of the things that sets modern Sonic and classic Sonic apart is that modern Sonic is a little bit taller, has a darker shade of blue, has green eyes, and longer quills. However, in Sonic Forces, they completely threw this out the window, kept the green eyes, kept the height, but the quills are much shorter, and he has a lighter shade of blue, almost the exact same shade as Classic Sonic. Another reason why I like Modern Sonic having longer quills and the darker shade of blue is because it shows progression from Classic Sonic to Modern Sonic. And yes, I know Sonic Forces already ruined that as well by making the point abundantly clear that these are two entirely different Sonics, completely throwing the plot of Sonic Generations out the window as if it did never even existed. And you may be saying that they're not going to bring Sonic's old design back because that's kind of stupid. They already flipped the switch. They're not just going to go back on it. Well, you see, Sega, they have no rules on how they do this. They, they completely threw generations out the window, so I doubt they'll hold off on throwing this out the window. So they have the ability to do this. I hope they can do it because it's kind of, I hate seeing it. However, uh, it won't completely ruin the game for me. If the game's good, the game's good. But this is a little touch that can make it a lot better. Coming in our number 9 spot is my personal opinion. You can disagree with this, you can completely skip this point completely. But I think we should go back to the old soundtracks. And by that I don't mean go back to Sonic Adventure's funky rock music, although that was pretty cool. Now something happened between Sonic Lost World and Sonic Forces. Sonic Lost World had a pretty good soundtrack. I mean, it wasn't any unleashed level, but it was pretty good. Better than most games. But when it comes to Sonic Forces, they made it all remixes, and believe me, there is some good tracks in here, but most of it is at best mediocre. Coming in at our number 8 spot is that we do not need Classic Sonic coming back in the next game. And I know this has been done over a million times in reviews that Classic Sonic should not come back, but I'm going to mention it here because it's very important. Stop bringing Classic Sonic back. He has no impact on the story, he's just there for, for no reason to make fans happy, even though it's not even making the fans happy. So, really Sega, just stop doing it. The scary part is that it's very easy for Classic Sonic to come back. For an example, all he has to do is walk through the door and Modern Sonic will be like, what forces you to be here? As well as at the end of Forces, Modern Sonic said we'll be seeing him again very soon. Uh. Cheer up, Tails. I'm sure we'll run into him again. No. No, we will not be seeing him again very soon. Coming in at our number 7 spot is going to be stuff that we urgently need for the next Sonic game for it to be good. Our number 7 spot, we have a better story. We really haven't had a good story in Sonic games since Sonic Unleashed unless you want to count Black Knight. There's always been something charming about Sonic Unleashed's cutscenes. It's like a Pixar movie and it felt like Sonic. It really did, because there was jokingly banter as well as a little bit of seriousness. And I think it did it perfectly. At its mixture of seriousness and goofiness, that made a perfect story. I mean, of course, the Werog didn't really have much significance, but if you completely throw that out, you got the story that fans been asking for. Now, the reason why I didn't rank it higher on this list is because a Sonic game can still be good with a bad story. For an example, Sonic Colors had a terrible story, but the game was great! However, I have my own opinion on Sonic Colors that I might be making a video about here soon. Anyways, for our number 6 spot, I'm starting to get passionate about this list, Hub Worlds. We need Hub Worlds to come back. I know that Hub Worlds have been bashed in the past, but quite honestly, I liked it a lot, so I guess this is a split. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I think Hub Worlds should come back. Or better yet, an open world Sonic game. 
That'd be dope. It's like a, a Skyrim Sonic. You run around this, like, big open world map and you start doing side quests. Like, imagine that. That'd be so cool. Except I don't think Sega's really ready for an open world Sonic game, so I think we should just stick to hub worlds. I mean, hub worlds are still cool. We can still explore. We can still have fun in the hub worlds, visit shops. It's a little bit more entertaining than just going through menus and clicking the next level. It's not very fun, that's why I like Hub Worlds, it's a nice transition between levels. At our number 5 spot, we have playable characters. We need more playable characters that's not just Sonic, and I think Sega's actually going to deliver on this. Believe it or not, I, I bet you money that there's going to be other playable characters that is not Sonic. They could at the very least replace Sonic in some of the boosting levels, like with Shadow for a level or two. That'd be really cool, and I think the fans would like it, because, I mean, who, who doesn't like Shadow? I mean, the dude is edgy, but he's an interesting character. Of course, in Sonic Forces, we've always had this big catalog of characters around us that we could not play as. We had to play as a customizable character and classic Sonic. I think that Sega should definitely put some more playable characters in their next game, or at least a more variety of playable characters that's not customizable character or classic Sonic. I think they should bring back Tails or Knuckles or Shadow. I think this is the most reliable point on this video. I think Sega's definitely going to put more playable characters in their next game. They wouldn't miss the opportunity for that. Especially for how much they've been getting yelled at to add playable characters. They, they're not going to miss this. Our number four spot, we need longer levels. For an example, Sonic Forces, the levels were one minute long. You could beat it in one minute, be done. There you go, got an S rank. Wasn't even hard. Sonic Forces length of levels were too tiny. We need the Generations Unleashed length of levels. The shorter levels was the whole reason why Sonic Forces was able to be beaten in two hours. There was one positive to Sonic Forces having shorter levels, and it was that when I played Sonic Forces for the first time, I beat in four hours, and I was able to refund it, get my money back. It was- that, that was the only positive. Other than that, it didn't serve any purpose. For our number three spot, we need better boost mechanics. For an example, in Sonic Forces, they took out the drift, they made the homing attack have one animation, and it was slow, and it was boring. We need the boost mechanics from Sonic Unleashed, and Sonic Generations. Not the same controls, but the mechanics. Because the mechanics were very important. And I know Forces didn't really need the mechanics because it was already an interactive movie. You didn't really move the stick at all. You just held forward and X. So, I mean, that that's Sonic Forces. But we're not trying to make Sonic Forces again. We're trying to make a Generations and Unleashed styled game. There is an alternative, and that's just making Sonic Adventure 3 because I think everyone would like that. But I'm a little bit scared on if Sega can do it justice. I don't know if they're ready to go back to adventure-style gameplay. They haven't experimented with the gameplay since Sonic 06. So Sega, if you choose to play it safe, give us better boost mechanics, please. For our number two spot, we have Generations and Unleashed level design. And again, this is assuming that it's boost-style gameplay. Sonic Colors level design only worked because of the Wisps. Sonic Forces level design was pretty much Sonic Colors level design, except it didn't really have anything interesting for you to do with the level design. So I was kind of sat there just to be an interactive movie. When I'm thinking of a boost game, I think Generations Unleashed, because the level design is outstanding in those games. But when it comes to Sonic Colors, I couldn't find as much enjoyment as I did out of those two games. Again, Sonic Colors wasn't a bad game, it's just that it worked because it had a gimmick. Sonic Forces didn't have a gimmick, they just had an interactive movie, so that made it bad. Terrible. So please, give us back our Sonic Generations and Unleashed level design. For our number one spot, this is very important to a Sonic game in my opinion. It's the reason why a lot of these Sonic games as of recent has been at mediocre at best. That's because it doesn't have any challenge. The next Sonic game needs to be challenging. Sonic Forces wasn't even challenging. However, they did have the right idea of adding an easy mode and a hard mode. Of course I chose hard when I was playing the first time, but it still felt like easy. Hard mode was not hard. It was it, it was easy. Why, why'd they even include that? It, I, and I seriously, when I was playing that game, I was asking myself, what does easy mode look like? What does it look like? Because apparently hard mode is not hard. What does easy- how, how much easier can this game get? It was also an issue with Sonic Generations. Again, it's an amazing game, but you're rewarded 
S ranks way too easily. You barely had to try and you could get an S rank. In Sonic Unleashed, you had to earn the S rank, which is why I thought it was a better game than Generations. Sonic Unleashed's challenge in the daytime levels didn't lie in whether you die or not, it lied on whether you get an S rank or not. What rank are you going to get? Sonic Generations could have easily done that by making the S ranks a lot harder to get, but since it's so easy to get, just like Sonic Forces, you barely have to try. That's why I think in the next game they should give an option just like Sonic Forces where the hard mode has unleashed difficulty and easy mode has generations difficulty. Anyways guys, I wanted to add an extra point, an honorable mention if you will, and that is that we need to return to the adventure style gameplay. It's a lot more experimental than the boost style gameplay because you can do a lot more with the gameplay, you can add new gimmicks a lot easier than the boost style gameplay. In the boost style gameplay, it's very strict and it's hard to add any gimmicks because it has to follow a very specific set of rules, but in the adventure style gameplay, you're just in a 3D playing field, so you can add a lot more than just boosting. Anyways guys, that's the end of the video. If you liked the video, make sure to like, comment, favorite, subscribe. Also make sure to check out the Discord server down below. We have cool people on there, you can probably talk to me sometimes. I'm mostly busy all the time, but you can possibly talk to me. Anyways guys, adios.